Hi friends, welcome to the Very Occasional Podcast with Morgan Quaid, now with 20% less chilli so you can slam it down fast. This episode features the ruthlessly driven Sam Vera, a comic creator, podcaster and comic artist. You can find Sam's latest work at dudiesworld.com and on Kickstarter with his ongoing project, There's an Alien in My Toilet. Before we get on to the show, don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast, because if I can get this channel to 500 subscribers, my barista is going to tattoo my name on his pet rock. Welcome to the Very Occasional Podcast with Morgan Quaid. I'm joined today by Sam Vera, a comic artist, podcaster, and comic creator. So first of all, Sam, thank you so much for joining me on the Very Occasional Podcast. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, let's talk about, um, that was a slightly over-exuberant sort of welcome. Sorry about that. Uh, Yeah, anyway. It is a pleasure. Uh, so tell us a little bit uh, about yourself. So we, we're going to get into a little bit later on uh, w- one of your main projects, uh, which is, of course, there's an alien in my toilet, which you can see by the uh, the, the title underneath Sam. There's yes. an alien in his toilet. Yes. Uh, so we're going to get into that in a tick. But let's let's start with yourself um, uh, and your creative journey. Where did it really start with you, with uh, comics and, and drawing and, and writing and all that sort of stuff? I started with my mom introducing me to Archie Comics when I was a kid. Um, right. And um, and I think if you really want to go back, and I'm going to date myself, uh, there was a show called Captain Kangaroo. I don't know if you ever heard of it. but um, Wow, and, I think I do, yeah. Yeah, it was a, a long time ago, Galaxy Far, Far Away. So in the old days, we used to have these big, giant TVs that were like, the, that were like a car, right? And so there right. was this big plastic screen that used to cover the monitor of the TV. And so Captain Kangaroo was very engaging. And so, so there were times where you had to like draw a bridge to help him get across the bridge, all these things. So I had markers and all that stuff. And so that was the creative process that, you know, uh, that started me off. Then I saw my brother, my brother, um, uh, he was born with a defective liver. He was, in the, and he spent most of his time in the hospital. When I would go visit him, he always had a sketchbook and he was always drawing. And um, he drew three monkeys in a barrel. And I was so impressed by it. I said, I want to start drawing. And right. I started, and I started illustrating from that point on. Every single one of my books, whether it was in elementary school, junior high school, high school, most of it was in was there was an illustration. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah. like, Does he even study? Does he even pay attention in class? And uh, 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 then it was my mom's boyfriend at the time said, "You will never amount to a real artist because all you do is copy what you see. A real artist creates from his mind." And so. Pouted, that went outside, <laughs> went went, in, went into my um, uh, clubhouse that I had underneath the house. I built this little clubhouse, and nice. I sat there, you know, and sulking. And then I said, you know what, I'm going to prove. Funny, it. funny, or oh, one other. Oh, oh, sorry, buddy. Buddy, buddy. So I'll prove nice. him wrong. And nice. um, I said, I'll prove him wrong. And from that yeah. point on, I started drawing. And my first character that I created for my imagination was. What's now Cosmic Gorf was he was he called him Scrungy, and then over time he evolved into Cosmic right. Gorf, and then it wasn't until um, it was the nineties when I started developing it as a comic book, and that was that was started that journey that way, and then it wasn't until two thousand three where I really made a serious um, go at it, and Cosmic right. Wars was my first comic book that I produced. Right. And how, um, so uh, what were some of the uh, artists or inspirations? So we talked about um, uh, Archie comics. We talked about, you know, the uh, Captain Kangaroo and all that sort of stuff. What were some of the, uh, as you started to develop as, as an artist and get more into it, some of the uh, influences? There was a show called Too Close for Comfort. Um, and the father was a comic strip artist. And he illustrated a character called Cosmic Cow. And... Right. He's a father with two kids and a wife. And I, and I asked my mom, I said, that's what he does for a living? She said, yes. And I was like, well, <laughs> I, I want to do that. I, that's for the first time I realized you can actually do that as a job. And um, I said, that's what I want to do. So that was the first influence as far as re- connecting the, the two. But I was a big Jim Henson fan. I loved Fraggle Rock, The Muppets. Right. 
um, yeah. the Dark Crystal. Um, you know, I was a big Charles Schultz fan. I loved the Peanuts. Um, and, you know, I loved um, um, Jim Davis, Garfield. And then it evolved. And then um, then it was Lightfield and McFarlane, um, the Buscema brothers. Um, you know, so for me, that that's and it evolved over time. And then uh, right. <clears throat> then I started seeing Joe Mad's work. And I started seeing Greg Capullo's work. And I was like, oh, my God, these guys are sick. And so I was like, <laughs> it's like, and I, so for a while I was trying to copy repeat, you know, so I was trying to be like them. I was trying to draw like them. And, and so I didn't yeah. find my own artistic voice, um, till I got like my hundredth, um, rejection letter. Then I was like, you know what? I gotta stop trying to be like them. Cause I'll never be like them. I need to be like me. And that's when I just yeah. came to terms with, let me just figure out what my style is and find my own lane. Yeah, yeah, that's always the. Um, I think most of us relate to that. The the, the rejection letters and thinking, yes. all right, I need to. Uh, I need to rethink things here because this is not what I expected. Yes. Um, true story. The biggest insult, but it was the that was the biggest awakening. It was uh, Top Cow. I said I sent the submission to them, and I got in the mail the, a response, not in writing. They just sent me photocopies of Michael Turner's art. So basically, oh. subliminally, they said, if it doesn't like this, don't <laughs> <even> bother. <laughs> Wow. wow yes i was like wait, oh. i was like wow you didn't have to say anything and that's when i realized i can't be these guys i gotta find my my way that's that's the equivalent of opening up the mailbox and just a fist just hitting you yes. in the face <laughs> yes, or awful. someone slapping you with a fish or something that's yeah. wow yes. hi my name is sam the crazy man vera and you're listening to the very occasional podcast Hit that like button, subscribe, ring that bell. If not, duty's going to take you to Uranus and lock you up. Well, okay, that that sort of brings me to my next next uh, question, which is, you know, about uh, you know a failure that you've gone through that has really taught you something, or that it has really sort of galvanized the way that you think about your art and and all of that sort of stuff. And we've, I suppose, we've we've had one with that <laughs> yeah. the virtual slap. Yeah, so um, my, my style of art is um, is simplistic when you think about it, um, and uh, it's because of that's what it, I'm attracted to, and mm. um, you know, so you always get critics uh, over the years, mm. and tons of them. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody, everybody wants to be able to tell you what they think about what you do. Um, yeah, but I've I've learned to grow a thick skin, and yeah. I realized that everything's a matter of taste, and you can't you can't please everybody. So I I focused on me. If yeah. I laugh, if I laugh when I'm writing the stories and I'm drawing the stories, I'm drawing the characters and I'm having fun, then hopefully someone's going to benefit from that enjoyment and they're going to yeah. see it and they're going to see the passion that I put into it. Um, but I'm creating for me. And that's when that's when it turned. That's when I said, you know what, I'm just going to focus on my character because I love my characters and yeah. um, and just trying to create the best story possible for them and take care of them in the story and then and hopefully you enjoy it and you you recognize it and for what it is um and i think uh <clears throat> because i've seen it i mean um my buddy he was an artist he was drawing his own comics he got a bunch of critics uh, ripping his art style apart so he stopped drawing and he's focused on writing <laughs> You know, so I'm like, yeah. That's like, you know what? Yeah, yeah. And I liked his style at the time, and I was like, you know what? I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to focus on building. You know, getting better over time. And I think this past, the past 18 months, I've really improved in a lot of ways. I've been, I'm always a student of the game first, and uh, so yeah. I'm always, yeah. I'm always um, trying to figure out how to do things better, um, see things faster, um, and I think that's why. It's so exciting about this creative endeavor is that um, there's, so, there's so much to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's um, uh, peel back then. Um, there's an alien in my toilet. Tell us a little bit about the story, the project, where the idea came from, and kind of where we're up to now in the in the story. So <clears throat> it's not like the like, Cosmic Gorf was been, with, been with me since I was a kid. Um, there's an in my toilet came at a time where we were making some moves in the independent comic world and a newspaper approached an editor says, I like your style of art. I like your storytelling. Um, do you have a sci-fi comic strip for our paper? We'd love to publish it. And mm -hmm. so at the time I didn't have it. And uh, so I was driving through the Lincoln tunnel and then boom, 
And this little green guy came in my head. He says, hi, I'm duty from Uranus. And that was it. And so, <laughs> and, was it. and so, and so he came to me. And so I got, went to IHOP, met my buddies and I, and I told them, they all thought that was crazy. I pulled off the table, <laughs> and I designed the character um, and I started plotting it out on a table napkin. And then I said, I'm just going to produce it as a comic book instead of a comic strip. I'm not going to give it to them. I, I'm going to do it myself. And that's how duty um, came to be. I've always been a UFO buff and a sci-fi buff. I, right. I subscribed to right. Mufon magazine. You know, I was always into all of, you know, you know the Ross World issues and um, and Project Blue Book and all that stuff. So for me, aliens have always been part of my life, and it was just yeah. a natural e evolution that I would draw um, an alien comic book. Wow the <laughs> the um the sight of you driving through the Lincoln Tunnel <laughs> and um, duty appearing from Uranus is still <laughs> stuck in my thing. It's funny how that happens sometimes. How there's some sort of trigger or something, and then the idea just hits you, and then yeah. it's almost like a form of possession. You just have to get this thing down. You got to get it out. You got to keep going until you. Wow, that's that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so you've you've run um, three or four Kickstarter campaigns so this far. This is the, this is the third one for Duty, but it's my eighth Kickstarter campaign because um, right, I had, okay. had Cast the Crazies um, um, that we started Kickstarters with, which is based yeah. on mine and George's story and our podcast, and yeah. um, and then I also had Forbidden, um, which is my fantasy more adult themed book that I launched on Kickstarter. So Duty right. this is the third this is the third campaign this year. Wow! Wow! Yeah, yeah. that's a lot of work. Yeah. So. Um, tell us a little bit about, because, uh, uh, one of the things that people that aren't comic creators probably don't know is that as soon as you go off on this endeavor and you're an indie creator, you're kind of a publisher and you're kind of a business owner, then you're, you're not just a creator. You're not just an artist. So tell us a little bit about your journey with that and what that's, that's been like. And also you've got the, the podcast side of things as well, which is a whole other dimension. Yes. Um, tell us how that sort of evolved and. What so happened? when I created Crazy Comics, was was my uh, imprint um, back in the early two thousands. Uh, actually, Crazy Comics in, it was born in nineteen ninety nine, I believe. But um, in two thousand three, um, you know, I, I got my trademark done. I got everything uh, in order. And um, um, when we started producing the comic book, I realized there was no real avenue to promote. And uh, yeah. so, um, and the only two podcasters at the time were comic geek speak and um uh indie comics relay i think it was um there was only two podcasters and they were focusing on marvel comics and dc comics the big two <clears throat> right. and so i went to a pod camp because at that time it was just a it was just in an infancy right and so cooking shows were doing podcasts and so i went to a pod camp i learned everything i needed and i went straight to sam ash and I said, hey, I need a mixer. I need some mics. I need this. I need that. Because that's what I <laughs> pod camp. And then I went home. I started hooking everything and had camcorders as cameras. It's crazy. Big old camcorders. Wow. And so, yeah, that's how that's how prehistoric I am. So, you know, we connect everything. And then I call up George and say, we got a podcast. It's called Cast a Craze. And he's like, what? And so I said, now we need to do that. <laughs> So because we met so many people, it was easy to get guests. We were getting people like LaShawn Thomas, who was the artist and, and, and producer on Boondocks, the animated series. You know, wow. we had um, the Dable Brothers. You know, we had uh, um, Michael Avon Oming. You know, we've had a lot you know, a lot of different people on the show. We had um, the, the, the creator, um, the artist on um, Gall Girls, the animated series. So we didn't have a problem getting people on the show. And it took off. And um, um, so for me, it was a means to promote... The independent mm -hmm. community, but also get our voice out as well. So uh, and build that audience from that. that so it was a, a two prong approach. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> I knew enough because I was working full time uh, in retail. I knew enough to know that I needed to make sure I crossed my T's and dotted my eyes. But I didn't know enough about how to play the game in comics. Uh, so I was uh -huh. doing things based on what I learned in business, and so. I contacted newspaper editors myself. I contacted, contacted radio stations, tr traditional radio stations myself. And I contacted Fox News and NBC News myself. 
and I got on the shows. <laughs> so <laughs> I sent them, them all media kits and then, you know, they're inviting me to the station. And I'm like, and so everyone's like, who is this guy? Why is he on TV? What's going on? And, uh, he's, like, don't even, he's not even in stores. <laughs> you can only get his books at the convention. This is ridiculous. <laughs> but I didn't know any better. So I would, I would yeah. sit at home and I'd pack. I mean, I put a media kit together. So I have samples of all my books and I have a press kit and all that stuff be like this thick. And I go to the post office every Saturday, I mill out 10. It was very costly. And I mail like 10, 10 a week. And I yeah. said, look, if I get, if I set mail out a hundred, if I get five bytes, I'm good. Well, I got on like 20 radio stations. I got on like wow. five news stations you know, and I was in the newspapers and it was just because of the hustle. And it was because of, you know, that, 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 that the ignorance of I me, mean, because if you talk to people in the game, this is, well, you got to go through news of yeah. or, or comic book resources yeah. or, spy, or, or silver bullets at that time, or, you know, all that stuff. And, um, yeah. and I was like, nah, that's just not enough for me. And I said, I need to get to the parents. I need to find the, that's my audience, you know, um, and, uh, you know, at the convention, it's fine because you got the walk-ins, but I need the parents because they're the ones going to buy it for the kids. And my stuff was all ages. Um, and so I was yeah. going a different route. Wow. <clears throat> I love the idea as well of you don't know any better, so you just go and ask. And you just ask <laughs> everyone. Yes. And it works. And it works, yes. People probably aren't expecting that because they think, well, surely no one would ask me unless they've been in the industry for a long time and they're, you know, whatever else. I love yeah. that. That's so indie. <laughs> It's so good. Yes. Um, yeah, that that is that's such a cool story. And and yeah, I hear you with the the promotion side of things and the just the lack of available spots to you know. And and I've got to say, shout out to this is a bit weird with you on the show, but shout out to Catch the Craze because uh, you have been a stalwart of uh, of promoting indie comic creators and all that sort of stuff for a long, long, long time. Um, so yes, big big um, shout out to you guys for that. <laughs> It's Monty Moore. I am a 30-year comics veteran in comics, games, and movies. And you've been watching one of my absolute favorite podcasts, Catch the Craze. You are watching Catch the Craze. What am I listening to? And you're listening to Catch the Craze. Where are all the indies at? A Catch the Craze podcast. What are you watching? I'm watching Catch the Craze. What are you going to do? Subscribe now to Catch the Craze, the number one show online for independent. Have you subscribed to? You are an independent. Catch, catch the craze. craze. Making moves on your own. Catch the craze. On your grind in the streets. Catch the craze. Join the movement. Catch the craze. All right. So is there an idea or a concept that you've played around with, but you haven't yet created it because it's either too difficult, too traumatic, or just, you know, to whatever, um, uh, too intimidating for you to, to try, something that you're willing to share, but um, it's kind of been on the, the back burner for a while. Um, nothing, see, <clears throat> I don't find anything, I'm not afraid of anything. Um, I'm actually inspired by anything that gives me pause. So if there's right. any time I'm like, hmm, then I'm like, well, why am I, why, why, why did that happen, Sam? Well, you need to go and figure it out. And so, uh, that's part of my being stubborn, and I and I get that. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you tell you tell me no, I'm gonna I'm gonna find a yes. And that's how I believe. I'm just a, yeah, and it, that's where that's where George and I are different. You know, for me, I'm just ruthlessly you know ignorant, and I'm I'm just gonna I'm going through that door. No, you can't go through that. I'm going through that yeah. door. You know, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And so for me, it's my own curiosity. It's it's my own passion, um, and it's my own um refusal to allow myself to regret um not trying do right. i have things i'd like to accomplish yes but i also understand that i'm only one person and um things have to happen in phases so my focus right now is really duty um my goal is to finish this brand um out this is a 10 part series and then it goes on there's another chapter i already started um the, the first issue is already fully illustrated for the next chapter um, so I, that's ready oh, wow. to go at the end of this one. Gee. And, uh, um, so for me, it's, I want to, I came to terms this year, actually, um, mm. with the, uh, the fact that 
I don't want to be known as an independent combo book creator that creates a lot of things. I mm. want to be remembered the way Charles Schultz was remembered for Peanuts. I want to be remembered the way Jim, Jim Davis was re remembered for Garfield. So Duty is that character. And this is where mm. it, the next chapter of my life is just really centered around Duty and just making it the best story and trying to get into as many households as possible. Um, mm. And that's my... that. Hopefully that'll be my legacy and hopefully it all, all roads will lead to, um, duty actually breaking that mold. Um, but I think when mm -hmm. I came back into comics after leaving for a decade, um, I was just trying to complete everything that I started and I was, it, it was a lot of half full cups. And yeah, so yeah. I was like, you know what? Forbidden is completely done next year. Forbidden will be in the stores, uh, in a graphic novel. Um, and I don't have to worry about that. So Forbidden is complete, 100% done. Cosmic Wars, I have to put it on the shelf for now. Catch the Crazies, I have to put it on the shelf for now. And Duty, um, I already had six issues illustrated. I just mm. never, I just never did anything with it. And so now it's my time to go out and finish what I started. And and this is my baby, and this is what I I plan on doing for the next decade. Wow, there's something in, inspiring and uh, daunting about that uh, from my perspective. So, so it's inspiring because I love the fact that you are honing in on this this one sort of world and, and and project because you have so much energy and so much drive that it, it's I'm I'm shuddering to think what you'll accomplish. You're just pushing everything towards this. Um, and the other side of it is for those of us that do do way too many projects, yeah, it, it, it's it's a constant reminder. Uh, am I going too thin? Um, is there too much? I need to just focus. And yeah, it's a constant yeah. theme in my own life. Uh, but that, no, that, that's that's really, really awesome. I, I, I love to hear that. Um, so uh, that's answered my next question, which is kind of what what's what's the, the key focus, what's coming up next, and all that sort of stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, it's duty. It's, it's duty, duty all time. the way home. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, it's time to move to the next segment, which is called the worst pitch. simple enough idea we both come up with a pitch for a, a film tv show book comic whatever it is uh that's just a terrible terrible pitch off the cuff and then we see whose is truly the <laughs> worstest of the two um wow. so i have a pitch locked and loaded because i have many bad ideas um but i'll give you the choice of whether you would prefer to go first or second because sometimes going second can be a little bit uh more tricky no, i'd rather go second <laughs> you rather go second all right very good. Very good. <laughs> All right. So here's the pitch. Uh, it's a simple one. It's a middle-aged man, balding, perhaps likes to wear flat caps, not modelled after me at all. Uh, middle-aged man uh, with a sentient mole on his back that swears incessantly. He works a normal job, goes to the office, wears a suit, all that sort of stuff, but the, the mole on his back... Uh, just gets him into into trouble, and he's you know constantly you know shouting out obscenities and all that sort of stuff. That's it. That it's just him going to work with a, a shouty, sweary mole on the back, nice. and and the the title of it is going to be salty language. There we go. That's it. <laughs> salty language. It's, <laughs> it's it's pretty bad. I don't even know what. Having said that, now that I think about it, with with the, your your style of artwork, I think you could actually make something really fun and and <laughs> and funny out of this idea. But anyway, that's my my uh, my terrible pitch. Man with a sentient mole that swears a lot. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I got it uh, over to you. All right, my pitch is about a book, a book like any other book, but it's a book nonetheless. Right. The title is "It's a Book." <laughs> that's my pitch that's it that's, that's it. it it's that's just it. a book it's a book it's a book like any other book but it's just a book oh man and you open the thing up and it just confirms yeah yeah this is just a book it's just a book there it is wow you win dude you win you totally win that one just fell off a cliff that, I was I was thinking, oh, he's thought this through. There's going to be like some you know deep philosophical thing here about the pages of the ink or whatever. No, it's just a book. Just a book. 
Wow. Well done, sir. Well done. You have outplayed me something. Yes. Wow. That's got to be the best worst pitch we've had so far. That's just, there's just nothing you can do. With it. That's fantastic. All right. That's what happens wow. when, you me, when you put me in a corner. That's what happens. Man, you came out swinging. That was. That's go. That is. Uh, I'm going to have to do a Hall of Fame, and the book that's just a book is now going to be on that Hall of Fame on its own because no one else can compare to that one. Wow, that's that's it's just a book. All right, okay. Now we move on to the rapid fire question uh, uh -oh. segment. So first, you have a choice. You have to choose between. Uh, you have to choose one: Star Wars, Star Trek, Star Wars. Ah, oh, just no <laughs> hesitation with you guys. Honestly, <laughs> that's all right. That's I'm not disappointed at all. Uh, you know, Star Wars. That's a perfectly legitimate choice. Well done. Uh, very good. Just a slight bit of sadness. All right. So, the near future, uh, let's say, or the distant future, I should say, let's say 2027. So far ahead, you can barely imagine what the world will look like then. Um, technology comes out which wipes everyone's skin. So, all tattoos are gone, and it is dictated by the world powers that everyone must get a single tattoo of their choosing. What is that tattoo, and where would you get it on your person? Duty. I think it's <laughs> nice. I was gonna say, even before I asked that one, it's kind of <laughs> if you didn't say duty, it would be kind of like, really? No, you're gonna get a tattoo of a carrot or something that doesn't make sense. With no, that makes perfect sense. All right, so you're allowed to pass on one toy from your life to your children and future generations. What is that toy? Duty, <laughs> he's right there. <laughs> They're all they're all going to be the same answer, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> These rapid fire questions are going to just fly the only, out the, the door. The only one that can supersede that is Alf. So it's either going to be all oh, right. It's either going to be a Duty classic. or my boy Alf right here. That's it. That's a classic. Two. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose Alf ticks all the boxes as well. Alien, you know, funny, quirky, yes. the whole package. I watch it go. every night. It's it's been running. Uh, it has its own channel out here, and I watch it every day. The cartoon <laughs> and the sitcom. I never even knew there was a cartoon. We're missing yeah. out in Australia. What's going on? Oh man, that's it has that's a great just... theme song too. You got to check it out. Does it? I will. Yeah. I will search for Alf. I thought he'd passed on or something. I haven't heard from him in years. I, I, anyway, all right. I'll, I'll look up Alf. Uh, okay. So what is the hardest fictional death you've had to deal with uh, from film, TV, books, anything like that, or one of the hardest? Hardest death. Oh, it was um, Braveheart. Braveheart. Mm. Oh, my gosh. When he streams out freedom and the, and, the, and the handkerchief falls out of his hand, oh, my God, I cried like a baby. It was horrible. Yeah, it's pretty bad. That was, yeah. that was rough. I covered rough. my eyes. I was like, oh, my God. It was, it was rough. <laughs> were you were you in the cinema or were you? I was uh, in the theater. Yes, it was. Oh like... no, that's even worse. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was. Rough. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. That's a good choice. Yes. Oh, no, I won't try a um the accent. I was going to do the accent. I'm not going to do the accent. I'll offend <laughs> many many people. So let's not do that. All right. So you have to invent a new color. What is it and why? And what's it called? New color. It would be a shade of blue. Right. And, and it would be uh, it would be called smile, because the color blue makes me smile. <laughs> there you go, smile <laughs> blue, ladies and gentlemen. I could have sworn you were going to go for green for I was other go for reasons. Green, but blue is my favorite color. Um, we got to go. Know. You got to go with your favorite. Yeah, so you, my walls are blue. Everything you know, else. So. That's yep. Yeah. And look, blue's close to green. I think. Uh, well, you put I some don't... yellow and blue. Yeah, you know, you get green. You get the same thing. Yes. All right, so uh, in the distant future, um, humanity lives a life of luxury and we're cared for by a servant race. Um, but the choice is yours as the grand poobar of decision-making and general fun times to decide which of these races is the servants uh, for humankind. It's either 
robots, um, AI, robotic helpers and all that sort of stuff, or um, demon folk who have been bound to serve humanity by various sorceries and such. Which would you choose? It would have to be robots because uh, the demons are going to get me. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> and the robots, hopefully the battery dies or I can unplug it or, you know, if so, if they act up. <laughs> Very good choice. All right. Yeah, actually, I hadn't thought about that. There's the whole power issue. Yeah, yeah. You just yes. take out the power and the robots are done. Yes. Unless, demons, they, I don't unless, know. They, unless they figured out how to just survive on solar, then it's over. <laughs> then <Yeah>. it's over. <laughs> or, uh, or that sci-fi thing where they seem to gather resources from the air and somehow turn it into power because yeah. of science. Yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite know. If what Elon Musk has it his way, and uh, you know, we're done. But <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it, it scares me. I did talk to someone that that knows a little bit about AI, and he was saying, "No, no, don't." Uh, uh, shout out to Sean. He was saying, "No, no, it's not. You know, we're we're miles away." But anyone that says to me we're miles away, I'm still thinking. Yeah, but we're on the road, though, aren't we? No, I mean, it, we're, we're not miles away. We're not miles away. We see what's happening in Japan. Oh, God, what's miles. happening in Japan? Too many they're robots. So they're so advanced with the technology. It's crazy. And uh, and Zuckerberg, he if you ever watched his interview when they, he was talking about, he slipped, talked about that that they were testing an AI, and they go, well, how far are we? Oh, I, no, no, it's just, it's just the, theoretical. He tried to backtrack. I was like, you're testing it? But yeah, but it's theoretical. Oh. Yeah, uh huh. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, we're oh, there. Man. We're there. It's very scary. It is funny though. Uh, I will say it's funny that we we can't imagine uh, a future where robots uh, take over or are the dominant species or whatever, where they're benevolent and they don't try and crush us and kill us. And it's the same with aliens. We just can't imagine them not being as terrible as we are to each other. You know, it's just for some reason it doesn't occur to us. I think that they're going to determine that we're a virus and they're going to have to destroy us in order to so save the earth. I think that's what's going to happen. That's that's the big fear. They'll they'll look yeah. at us and say, "Yeah, you're you're no good for the the overall uh, yeah. cosmos." So out you go. Uh, or they'll they'll do the best thing for us. You know, they'll yeah. eliminate things from our life that aren't healthy for us. We'll be um, in cages, and it'll be the robots visiting us at the zoo. Yeah. Wow, that took a rapidly depressing <laughs> turn i'm picturing ro robots just sort of coming by and scanning us as they go by and we're just yes. in pens together yes. huddled you know in dirty rags and stuff remember when we ruled the planet oh he's gone yeah very good all right well thank you sir <laughs> yeah yeah i can just see you you're sitting in a cell just holding on to a duty uh, flush flush thing just like you'll not take it from me <laughs> from my cold dead hands that's it very cool all right so uh that concludes the rapid fire questions uh section and we are getting close to the end of the um uh what is this thing podcast that's what it is we're getting close to the end of the podcast um i just wanted to return to the artistic side of things and the illustration versus writings in terms of your your process um do you Illustrate first with the ideas or sketch out, you know, uh, words of the, the sort of rough structure or rough framework. What's your process for building out, say, a new a new comic? When I created Forbidden, I wrote out the entire script. Um, I wrote out the history, the bios, um, everything, the roadmap. Mm. I created the world um, before I designed the looks of the characters. Um, right. For duty, I designed the character. And then started drawing, and then the dialogue came as I, as I started illustrating. Um, so that's how I still pro that's how it still works now. As every page that I'm illustrating, the dialogue comes to me as I'm putting them into sequence. Uh, I already I know where I'm going, but the words right. and the world just give, comes to life during the illustration process for me. Right. Okay. So illustrate first, and then well, with duty anyway, and then yeah. then the um, the text comes in. And do you find you? Um, the idea changes when it comes to putting the lettering in or, or or you just adapt the lettering to what you already know the story is um so i'll give you a perfect example when i wrote duty's monsters on planet cthulhu um i had already plotted it out but when i started illustrating it it it, it turned it went another direction 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so it, it was it was like the story was telling me, no, no, no. You get, even it, like I knew what initially what I had in pl- I planned, but the characters dictated the motion and the journey. And so that's right. and it changed. It was like, oh, I didn't think about this. And it only happened when I started putting pen to pad. Um, and uh, uh, there was like a, there was a scene that I wanted to do where I was going to have them talking about the history of Cthulhu. And instead, of, um, that was scrapped, and I just illustrated it um, to to, to oh, it visuals. Right. Yeah, and so yeah. it changed. Instead of having them sitting in a classroom and they're talking to each other, it changed to actually show what it looked like on the what it what it looked like. So it was like going like backwards and showing history. Um, so it that's what it happens all the time. It's like I, every time I decide I'm going to do some, one thing, it just changes. Right. Yeah, and it's such a uh, tight process because it's you as writer and artist and creator, and so you don't. There's no back and forth with you know yeah. other artists or anything. It's just that's yeah. great. That must so make you it. have on the on one screen. I have the the script out, like I have like the plot out, and on the right. other screen I'm drawing. And then so what I do is when I'm when I'm done illustrating, then I go over and I start putting the dialogue in based on what I'm seeing, and then um, uh, and that's what happens. So it, it'll just say. Like the plot is, this is going to happen. This is this is the start. This is the middle. This is the ending. But then it evolves when I'm drawing. Well, thank you very much, Sam, for joining us on the very occasional podcast. It's been a pleasure having you here, learning about your creative journey. All the best with an alien in your toilet, uh, the aforementioned duty. And uh, yes, thank you again for joining us on the podcast. Thanks for having me. This was so much fun. What's up, guys? My name is Samuel. Um, you can find me on DutiesWorld.com. It is dedicated to everything, all things about duty. But there's also a section with uh, other projects that I've created from Cosmic Wars to Forbidden. Um, you know, uh, these books will be available. Issue three will be available on my on DutiesWorld.com in uh, October. But right now, it's uh, available on Kickstarter and uh, Catch the Craze dot, uh, on YouTube. So Catch the Craze with a D A. Uh, we are a podcast that promotes the independent community uh, from artists, creators, producers, illustrators, animators, puppeteers. Um, we talk to everybody and we try to shine a light on them. So visit us on Cast the Crazy. And we're streaming on iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify. You can check us out there. And my social handles anywhere, it's Catch the Craze. So whether it's on Twitter, it's the same everywhere you go. It's Catch the Craze and you'll find me anywhere. Thank you so much for having me on. I had a great time. Check out this nail in my toilet. It is funny. If you like to laugh, this is for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that, stick my face over the top of yours, <laughs> and just change some of the words because that's that's like a really good rundown of where to find stuff. So, I'll, you know, I'll do the same thing for my podcast. The very um, occasional podcast. Yes. Um, you to V-O-P. <laughs> I should call it that. That's way better. Vop. Um, we have Sam Vera uh, of uh, Duty. No, <laughs> I was gonna say of Duty fame, but that's not gonna. You know. All right, I'll just I'll forget that. I'll just go. All right, <laughs> it's the first time. It's gonna be really, really rough. Trust me. All right, welcome to Let's. No, uh, you're gonna have to pronounce that. Chihahul. Oh, man, I can't Chihuahua. Do that. Oh, it's Chihuahua. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen it spelt. Oh, hey, Chihuahua. That makes sense. All right. <laughs> yeah, wow. you get the same problem I have. When I first yeah. saw when I first uh, saw on the menu um, hors d'oeuvres, I pronounced it hors d'oeuvres. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how would you know otherwise? Yes. <laughs>